I'm not like other booktubers. I like chicken nuggets. Hello. I'm going to do my February wrap-up and my March TBR. There were two books I read in February that, while worth mentioning, didn't merit filming an entire video, so I'll just cover them briefly. Starting off with Tempest Tossed by Robertson Davies. A small town in Canada puts on a performance of The Tempest. Has its hilarious moments, has its overly philosophical moments. It was very well written, but it just didn't click for me. It took me a while to read it, mostly because I, my main motivation for reading it is that I've set myself a goal, a lofty, noble goal, of reading one book by every author mentioned in the Moxie Fruvis song, My Baby Loves a Bunch of Authors. Robertson Davies seems like a pretty good author, and probably one of his later books was much better. I also read a memoir this month, Born with Teeth, by Kate Mulgrew. She had a very impressive acting career, She led, and led a very charmed life, tra uh, quite tragic at times. In fact, the, uh, the book punches you in the gut right away to start off. It's a great book for a Star Trek fan looking for, you know, some depth outside of Star, uh, Star Trek. Not really a great book for a Mrs. Columbo fan looking for wit inside the Mrs. Columbo universe. And let's move on to the books I'm reading this month. When I read, I don't really love rigid goals or structure. I sort of, you know, pick up something when I want to, or, or I'll see something shiny at the library and grab it. I don't have long lists of books I want to read or set goals of how many books I want to read in a given time, or other than, of course, the Moxie Fruvis goal. Though I admit I, I do need some structure in my life, and that's why I have this, uh, this basket. It provides just enough structure that my books don't fall on the floor. <clears throat> I'm not going to read all these books this month. And I'm going to read this book, some books this month that haven't made it into the basket yet, whether, whether that be a future trip to the library or something on my own bookshelf. It starts intriguing me. Um, these are all books I've started. Some of them, some of them in the past week or so, some of them years ago. These are all books I'm currently lead, reading, would like to finish soon. Sometimes if a book stays in the basket too long, I'll put it back on the shelf. First we have The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. This year I'm trying to read a lot of first, or first books in a particular genre. Back in January I read Riders of the Purple Sage, called by many the first cowboy book, and this is considered by many the first detective mystery novel. It's very good so far, though I'm a little worried because I'm at the point where it's going to change narrators halfway through, I think. This has been sort of a trudge for me since I already know the solution to the mystery. It was spoiled for me years ago. I didn't want to pick up this book until I'd forgotten it, but nope, it's still there. I wish I didn't know still very good, good, even though I know it's going to be the solution at the end. Wilkie Collins was a friend of Charles Dickens, and there's a lot of similarity to their writing style. Overall, I'm enjoying it. Last month, I was walking through one of my favorite used bookstores, and I saw a paperback in the Signet Classic line but I'd never heard of the book before. Or I might have heard of it and forgotten it, so being intrigued, I grabbed it. Bread and Wine by Ignacio Salone. 
It is set in the time of Mussolini in Italy. Uh, the back of the book says, Ranked with Orwell and Cam Camus among writers who insist upon linking hope for social change with the values of political liberty. The main character in this book is a Marxist leader, which, which could be fine. Maybe his character is going to arc, but he's a huge fan of Vladimir Lenin and the, uh, and the Russian Revolution. Other nations' Marxist books at the time were pretty wise to avoid name-dropping. But I'll see where it goes. It's still fairly interesting. My pastor suggested I read The Covenant of Grace by John Colquhoun. I just I just started it, got through the introduction and the first couple pages, mostly just to get myself more acquainted with uh, covenant theology. Probably not going to finish it this month because it is a more technical read and have to look up scripture references as you go through. The Acceptable Sacrifice by John Bunyan. I enjoy John Bunyan's books on theological topics more more than more than I enjoy his allegorical work. It's not that it's not that I don't like Pilgrim's Progress. I just don't really enjoy it. The title and text of this book comes from Psalm fifty one, which is my favorite psalm. So. <laughs> Last month I read and reviewed Open Season, and when I returned that to the library, I saw that they had the, they had the second book in the Joe Pickett series, Savage Run. I don't normally read, uh, read books in a series one read right after the other, but I left the first book not completely sold on Joe Pickett or C.J. Box as an author, so I wanted to at least glance through this book, and, and I wanted to see if he was an author I wanted to put in my rotation. And oh man, this book is so much better than the first one. If you think you'd like a mystery thrill thriller novel with a game warden, yeah, don't start with the second book in the Joe Pickett series, Savage Run. It's it's very good. It solves most of the problems that the first book had. I look forward to finish it. I'm most of the way through it. I'm I'm probably not going to do a review of it. Definitely CJ boxes. Going into the rotation of authors I'm willing to read. Last February or March, I was waiting around my library, and there were you know people checking out, and I was just glancing at the 900 section, uh, 900 section slash biography section, and I saw a book that looked it looked interesting, and I I looked it up in my phone and noticed there was no Goodreads reviews, but I'd already selected two books, and I. Don't like to have three library books out at a time, so I left it there, figured I'd get it next time. But then the library closed for a couple months, and I forgot about it. I finally remembered it on my last trip to the library, and turns out I'm even more interested in it now than I was, was last year. So many lights. Library book. Before the Throne of Grace. An Evangelical Family in the Early Republic by Laura Seitz and Elaine D. Baker. This book is a family history from the local area, and those tend to be stodgy, but uh, but this one seems like my sort of book. It's a gathered from the introduction that the patriarch of this family is a Presbyterian minister from the tradition of the First Great, Great Awakening. It deals with his struggles coping with the Second Great Awakening. Yeah, that's sort of what I'm interested in a book. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> this book has been clogging my reading basket for quite some time. Uh, Stalingrad. This has been in my basket for quite a while. It's actually been in and out a couple times. 
the Battle of Stalingrad is just very depressing. But it's it's a well-written book, and I do want to finish it, and I do want to be cool like the BBC's David Mitchell. And I'm getting through it, and he, again, the basket is in the hard system. I might read a chapter out of this book a week, if that. And sometimes I'll sit down and read three. So maybe I'll finish it next month or next year. Last last month I had great luck going to the library and grabbing the shiniest book on the shelf and tried again this uh, tried again this month and I got The Red Hands by Christopher Golden. So this book has started off with a very exciting opening chapter. It seems to be it seems to be some sort of you know, thriller, ho horror book. Don't we don't know if it's paranormal or biological or some sort of ancient evil sort of thing. You know, the main character, the one at the center of this this horrible evil, uh, the, the, this horrible evil, is named Maeve. No, no, Maeve's a fine name, but seems a bit on the nose for this type of character in this type of book. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You know, overly fitting names are, you know, sometimes make a book e Overly fitting names sometimes make a book easier to read, if anything, but sometimes you just wonder, is that all the cleverness the author has to offer? Did they waste it all on that point? But really good opening chapter. Second chapter. Well, it was a really good opening chapter. I'll probably finish it see where it goes. And then last but certainly not least, I'm reading uh, Mulliner Nights by P.G. Woodhouse. Got to keep something fun in the basket at all times. If you're in a bad minute mood, P.G. Woodhouse is always a great place to go. Though, uh, this is a collection of his Mulliner stories. And, and Mulliner is just a person telling stories about his family. Mulliner stories are a bit edgier than, let's say, Jeeves and Wooster. But, and by edgier, I mean in, in the same way that Family Circus is edgier than Ziggy. Those are some of the books I'll be working on this month. Don't hold me to it. I won't either. There'll be a link in the description below to Moxie Fruvis' song, My Baby Loves a Bunch of Authors. I still have a place in this box for a book by an author mentioned in that song. So if you have a suggestion, let me know. Thank you for listening to me. I'll let you know when I finish one of these books. Toodle pip.